So I'm just sitting outside, um, just um, reflecting on the times, reflecting on the situation, and realizing that with every single cancer in my life, who's also been in my daughter's life, every single one of them, I've had to protect her from them. They mean her no good. They don't have her best interests at heart. They, they make it seem like that at first, but if they got something against me, then they kind of, in a sense, take it out on her. Or she has to go through it when they have something against me because it's something that they don't want me to have. So then she gets, you know, drug in the middle of that as well. And it all started with her dad. Her dad was the very first cancer I ever dated, at least I, when I cared to know what people's signs were and realized he was the first one. Got with him. Shit was crazy. I mean, it wasn't like super crazy, but as far as just protecting her from him, um, just making sure she knows that no matter what, even though that's your dad, if he's doing something stupid or he's doing something wrong, he going to feel it too. And letting her understand that, making sure she understands that. Because I think it's really, really important that she knows that I'm here for her and I got her back. So when it came to her dad, him trying to show her how to fight and she doesn't want to fight and him not even attempting to try to cater to her individuality and who she is and getting to know who she is. Him just saying, well, my family and people who come from where I come from, we fight and you ain't going to be no punk. But you're not even you're not even connecting with your child and trying to figure out who your child is. You feel like from what you know about your child that you, you've you gathered her up and you feel like you know who she is and now you're going to turn her into something that she's not. You feel like she's a punk or whatever and you don't like who she's presenting to you, which is her true self. But you can't even accept her true self. She has to be like you. And that's something that I just... <clears throat> I don't understand when it comes to the people that I've dated the last three, the cancers, especially the men, they were just so into, oh, well, she gets that for me. Because the men that I've been with, the cancer, the two cancer men that I've been with, um, Ty, sorry about that. Got to call my dog. <laughs> Pause this. But yeah, the two cancer men, it's like, even with their daughters, it's like the, the girls couldn't have anything for me. Even when I'm clearly looking at the girl. Okay, Luna, Luna with the mouth. Go that way. Go, go, Luna with the mouth. Yeah, man. Like, they just felt like the kid couldn't get anything for me. And I'm clearly looking at the child and I'm like, this child does this because of me. They just think that everything comes from them. So when I explain stuff about my, about my oldest to her dad or he just you know picks up on different things she does or I tell him a story about something she does it's always oh man she get that for me she got my attitude she got this for me and it's like damn does she ever have any you never say anything for me never now mind you the things that I be talking about is stuff that needs to change like oh she did this she did that or whatever sometimes most of the time I say most of the time uh but it's like, damn, she can't have shit for me, huh? <laughs> Not nothing. Why you want her to be like you so bad? And then if she is being like you, you ain't trying to change anything. Being that you said that your kid is like you and you know you fucked up. But you still come at your kid with the same rules and logic that was brought to you when you were growing up in your youth. And you've grown up to be an adult. And we see how that shit turned out. Don't you think you want to tell us something different and not the same shit that you went through? Don't you think? I would think. I wouldn't want to tell her and give her the same rhetoric that I had, directions that I had, upbringing that I had, seeing as though that ain't did shit for me. If I'm not where I need to be in life or where I would like to be in life to be better, the fuck kind of shit is that? Nigga, no. So... I had to protect her from her own father 
because of the situation. And I'm I handle every situation. Every time something has happened when it comes to my daughter, my oldest, I have handled it. Oh, there they go. There go my baby. There go my baby. Every time something has happened, I've handled it from her father hitting her, trying to teach her how to fight and be like, so I guess if somebody hits you like this, what are you going to do? And it shocked her to the point where she was just, she came and told me and I handled it immediately. He ain't like it, but I don't give a fuck. Because if she tell me something wrong, I'm going to fix that shit. Hey, baby. Yes, baby. I'm going to come inside, okay? I'm coming. Okay. Okay. Then from the second cancer, which was a female, her, you know, being there for my daughter and treating her a certain way, and you know what I'm saying? Which, not in a bad way or nothing like that, but in front of my face, everything was cool. But when shit ain't, ain't going, when shit didn't go right, it was like, fuck my kid. Fuck my kid. Then just recently, this tramp want to get in touch with me because she's not getting what she asked for. It's not coming consistently. She ain't getting what she asked for. So she wants to come at me about that. Not even about the kid. Just about that. And um, after the fact that she getting her getting the answers that she was looking for. Then she wants to talk about the kids. It's about the money first. Then it's about the kids. And it's like, no, I'm not fucking with nobody who ain't thinking about the kids. No more. (laughs) Why am I the only one thinking about the kids? It's fucked up. It's so fucked up. So... Yeah, she want to ask me questions about my child after the fact. I know we haven't spoken in years, but I just, I think about her every day. You lying motherfucker. And if you do think about her every day, if you're not lying, you think about how fucked up you was and how you didn't have to do the shit that you did. But now you got to stand on that shit. In front of whoever that you're trying to say face in front of, you got to stand on it. But behind closed doors, to me, you want to make it seem like, oh, you so, you know, you really think about, you really care about. You probably ain't saying that you think about and you care about to everybody else in your life, but you're going to say it to me to try to get something out of me. You ain't going to get shit out of me because I guarantee you every cancer that I've ever been with, they're realizing at this point right now that we're not together, that they had a good ass person. They had a really good person and they fumbled this, that fucking person so hard and they will never get that back. My daughter's father always tries to get back with me. We'll never get that back. That ship has sailed. Well, actually, that ship didn't go nowhere. That's why we're not in anything today. It wasn't a relationship. It was a fucking relationship. And that is why we are no longer in that motherfucker. That's why I'm no longer there. You can stay on that ship, but I'm out. I got off. Still will try to come at me. Even when he knew that I was with somebody else and was having babies. Still was trying to have a family with me. Still wanted to be with me. Because they know. And I applaud people for evolving and, and coming to realizations, right? I applaud people for that because that's what I feel like is happening. They come to realizations after some time has passed. Like, I really had a good person. Bebe, come here. Come here. Come to mama. They realize that they had a good person. And they realize that they, Jersey Ray. Oh no, oh no. (laughs) Yeah, I had to spend some time with my girls. My girls just got up and uh, I was just talking to them right quick. So, huh, excuse me if I don't finish right where I left off because this is, you know, I'm just picking right back up. But um, yeah, just, I'm thinking that I left off on just protecting my child. Oh, I was talking about the female. Yeah, the female. So it was just, it, it blew my mind how, like I said, she just did the things that she did, the way that she did it. And then you want to come now, get in contact with me and try to convince me that uh, 
you want to still be in her life and you think about her all the time. You probably do. But it is what it is. Oh, I think I was talking about growth. Yeah. So I'm totally okay and, you know, understanding of people and they, they their evolution, if you will. But what people need to understand about them evolving and learning more and realizing shit, even though you realize that shit, I still ain't got to have nothing to do with your ass. I still don't have to deal with you just because you've learned. And I might want to listen to what you have to say in order to get something to give me a certain level of peace that I've been looking for. Maybe closure, if you will. But that's it. And I don't, I've come to the realization is that I probably will never get the one thing that I would like to get. And that's okay. People always talk about closure, closure, closure. I probably won't get that. The typical closure that people be looking for, the answers people be looking for from the other person, I probably won't get that and I'm okay. Because even though these people know that they did some wrong shit, they'll still try to make me feel like I had a part in it. Like you've learned, but you didn't learn enough to still not blame me. To still not make me feel like it's my fault. And they don't apologize. They do not apologize. Not to me. Do they apologize to my daughter? Uh, Not really. The men, I mean, well, her dad, yes. But it took a while for that. It took, after the incident happened, I want to say it took almost six months for the apology to come. Because it was just pointing the finger, pointing the finger at me. And I'm like, how the fuck you going to point the finger at me for some shit you did when I wasn't even there? Or pointing the finger at her, making it seem like she's not telling the truth. How are you going to downplay her, her experience? Because you fucked up. You fucked up. Just admit that you fucked up. It's okay. Players fuck up all the time. Oh, you ain't no player. <laughs> But with the men, yeah, just accountability is hard. And people don't want, they don't want to be accountable, I guess, and feeling like if I say I'm sorry to her or apologize to her, like that takes something away from me. And they, they don't want to do that. I don't, I don't know. That's why I've just gotten to this place where I, I'm like, I won't get that closure and that's okay. It's cool. Like I said, even with my, my ex, the female, if she would have came at me differently in the emails, and started off totally different, things could have been a lot different. If she would have started off with apologizing, because I know she knows she fucked up. I know she knows she didn't have to do me the way she did. If she would have started off with apologizing, that would have been a little bit. Still don't want to fuck with you. Still don't want to have no conversation with you. But I accept that apology. I appreciate that. My stomach's going to start going off. <laughs> but she didn't even give me that. Or if she would have at least started off with the talking about the kids. Not about fucking money, but the kids, it'd have been different. Now, how she hurt my child or did something to my child, she didn't physically do anything to my child that I know of. But it was the, um, when I was moving out, when I was moving out of her place or the place that we shared together, when I finally decided I didn't want to be with her ass no more and I was coming to get all my stuff and all my baby stuff. She threw my baby shit on the curb while I was there, nigga. Walked that shit to the, I was getting ready to grab the shit. She grabbed it and took it to the motherfucking curb and threw that shit on the curb. Not hardcore, but she tossed it. She tossed the shit at the, on the curb while holding her child. While literally holding her child, tossed my child shit to the, to the wayside like she was trash. Like, oh, you don't want to be with me and take care of me and or, you know, facilitate my dreams? Fuck you and your kid. Get this shit. Get all this shit. Never apologize. But you, I think about her every day. Were you thinking, was you thinking about her when you tossed that shit? Was you thinking about her when you did me the way you did me? Because me not being around you, I still got to be around her. I still got to take care of her. Was you thinking about her then? No. You was thinking about yourself. 
you just think about your kid. One came out your coochie. The one that I really have no ties to other than paperwork. Fucking paperwork. And she gonna take that paperwork serious because the world takes that paperwork serious. The government takes that paperwork serious. And that's the only thing that she got on me. So yes, she gonna ride that motherfucker till the coattails fall off. And then with this last cancer, just the ultimate betrayal. The ultimate betrayal. Just the, just, ha. I don't even think I'm ready to say it just yet because everything is still so fucking fresh. I'm not ready to even just say it out loud just yet of what he did. I've had to say it a couple of times because I had to say it. But for me to actually say it and and come to a realization of what really happened, because it's still right now unbelievable. The proof is all there. So you can't you can't deny it, but it's still like nigga. Really? You this? I, you can never you can never recover from that. You can apologize. You can apologize and it will be accepted. But at the same time, that apology is coming with skepticism because of how you have presented yourself from the very beginning. How I realized you've presented yourself to me from the very beginning. Manipulation. So even with the apology, because to me, I feel like if a person comes to you and they want to say their piece or whatever claim they want to say their piece, let them talk it. Even if you feel like you don't believe it because you really never know. It sucks because of all the manipulation tactics and all the shit that they did that it's hard for people to believe them. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that they're incapable of ever telling the truth because they possibly can. And you have the choice to either accept it and move on and say, fuck you. And I choose to just at least let the person just say what the fuck they're going to say. Say what the fuck you're going to say. Get it off your chest. Go ahead. You good? You straight your show? All right. I ain't got to say nothing back. I ain't got to care. I don't. I ain't got to do shit. But live and take care of these kids. Because once you're in my review mirror, baby, you're in my review mirror. I might... The only reason why I'm entertaining the the, the uh, apology with you being in my review mirror is the fact that when I look, you're still there. I see you back there. Now, in order to get you the fuck out of the mirror... I just need to hear some last bullshit that you got to say. Say that shit. You done? You feel bad about yourself? All right. Because I still look at you the same. I ain't going to fuck with you no more. I'm not fucking with you no more. I don't wish you any bad because that don't do nothing good for me. And I'm trying to bring in as much good karma and positivity as I possibly can. So I don't wish nothing bad on you. I won't. I don't fuck with you. I can't trust you. I'd rather not be in a room with you. But I don't wish you no ill will. I just wish that you stay the fuck away from me. (laughs) I just wish that you leave me the fuck alone and stop thinking that shit's going to be sweet. Or that you can use the same tactics that you had before to try to reel me back in. Thinking that I'm the same person. See, you didn't even see my growth. You didn't even, you never even acknowledge my growth if you think I'm going to go back with your ass after what you did, after what you put me through. Other than the fact of what you did to my child, which matters to me a whole lot. But the particulars of the shit that you even put me through, the, the other shit, the shit that I had to deal with, the way you talked to me, the way you treated me. You think I'm just supposed to be like, oh, yeah, it's cool. Physically abusive, mentally abusive. Well, not physically, but more so mentally abusive and just talking, abusive talk. Abusing your words when you talk to me, not even just no respect for me at all. At times. And wanted to be justified. Got it, mama? Come on. 
Come on, baby. And wanting it to be justified. Feeling like you should be that sh- you should be justified. I was mad at the time. You don't think with shit that we had going on, I was mad. I think what what confuses people is how I'm able to stay so calm. Hey, baby. Get them shoulders, girl. I think they just, they don't understand how I'm able to stay so calm. That right there fucks them up. You can't be mad. You can't really care. She didn't really, she wasn't really upset. I think I still got a chance. I don't want to go inside. I'm outside right now. Bubbles. We will do bubbles today, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you see Ty? Ty, get back over here. You see Ty? Mm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, just... Dang! <laughs> this last situation. Who man. It's going to take some time. But we rebuilding, and I can't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> I really can't because... These kids need, they gonna need until they, <laughs> they gonna need till they out of my care and they on their own. And even then they still gonna need me. So I gotta, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. I can't, okay Todd, now God damn it. <laughs> I can't, I can, I can be down and I can, you know, go through everything and Go through the emotions and stuff like that, but I got to get up quick. I got to get up quick. So it'll come time when I actually release everything from this situation because those other situations are done. It'll come that time. And I honestly feel like I've released a lot. You want to sit on my mom? Mm-hmm. Come here. I actually oh, feel like I've released a lot. I've released a whole lot. But, um, It's, it's just coming to the realization and getting to that place of it's, it's it's just so unbelievable it's just so unfortunate yes. yeah baby it's just so unfortunate yes. and to know I, now I have two mm-hmm, two babies who will just never see Dada. talking on my phone Dada. <laughs> No. No. Oh, Dada. 